dependable Dodge Plymouth dealer in your neighborhood, the man who sells and services the elegant new 54 Dodge presents the new Roy Rogers Radio Show. Yes, folks, it's the new Roy Rogers Radio Show for the whole family. Adventure, suspense, mystery, and music. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, the mellow man, and an all-star cast. And now, here to greet you with a song and a story are Roy and Dale. As I walked out in the streets of Laredo, as I walked out in Laredo one day. Well, good evening, folks. Here it is another Thursday, and here we are again with a story and a song. I'll bet you recognize the song already. You know, that tune has really got two names. Some folks call it the Cowboy's Lament, but mostly it's known as the Streets of Laredo. And whenever I hear it, I think about Charlie Simmons. Charlie and his wife, Jean, own a small ranch down near Laredo, right on the Mexican border. As a matter of fact, you can walk right out of Charlie's backyard and go wading in the Rio Grande. Well, Jean and Dale were old schoolmates, and every few months, Dale would get a letter from Jean inviting us all to come down and visit. So we finally took her up on it and made the long trip from California. And when we finally arrived, the entrance to the Simmons Ranch sure looked mighty good to us. We drove up to the main house and honked the horn to let them know we were there. We sat and waited a minute or two, but nobody came out. That struck us being kind of funny, so we got out of the car and went up to the house. The front door was unlocked, so we went in. Nobody was around. Then from the bedroom, we heard the sound of a woman sobbing. Dale ran in and found Jean lying on the bed, crying her eyes out. Jean, what's the matter, honey? Oh, Dale, Charlie's missing. He's disappeared. I think he's dead. In just a moment, you'll hear the entire story of what happened to Roy, Dale, and Pat on the streets of Laredo. The Big Dodge 40th Anniversary All-America Contest moves into March. There's never been a contest like it. Win two weeks away with double pay. A glamorous, exciting vacation trip for two anywhere you say in the USA. Dodge pays your expenses, doubles your two-week salary, gives you $500 to spend or save, and puts an elegant new 54 Dodge at your disposal for the two weeks. Many more grand prizes like this will be given away. There's a brand new contest every day, plus large daily cash awards. You better hurry. There are only 21 days left. And by the way, because so many of your neighbors are buying the elegant new Dodge after entering this contest, your Dodge dealer now has the best selection of top quality dependable used cars in town. See your Dodge Plymouth dealer right away. Elegance in action. The Dodge with more than ever before. More to it, more in it, more of it. The great new Dodge for 1954. More to it, more in it, more of it. The dependable new Dodge for 1954. And now back to Roy and Dale and the story that happened on the streets of Laredo. Now, Jean, drink your tea. It'll make you feel better. Thank you. I'm sorry you found me in such a state. This certainly isn't the happy reunion I planned. Now, stop fretting, Jean. You just pull yourself together and tell us some more about what happened. I don't know what happened. All I really know is Charlie's been gone for two whole days, and that's not like him. Why, he's never been away from home for a single night the whole time we've been married. Well, maybe he had some kind of an accident. Well, I thought of that. I called the hospitals and the police station. They haven't seen him, huh? Not a trace. When he left, did he take any extra clothes with him? Or suitcase or anything? No. He said he was just going into town for a while to see Mr. Merton. Mr. Merton? He's a friend of ours. Businessman. Well, is Charlie's car missing, too? He didn't take the car, Roy. He rode into town on his paint. A paint? Well, a horse like that shouldn't ought to be hard to locate. Pat. Yeah, Roy? 
Hey, get Trigger out of the trailer and borrow one of Charlie's horses and saddle him up. Where are you going, Roy? Into Laredo. A man just can't disappear off the streets like this. There's got to be a reason. I guess it's right up these stairs here. Yep, this is it. L.B. Merton. Come in. Uh, Mr. Merton? Yeah, that's right, sir. L.B. Merton. Well, I'm Roy Rogers. This is Pat Brady. Howdy. Roy Rogers? Well, yes, of course. I'd recognize you anywhere, Mr. Rogers. I've seen your pictures. Well, thanks. What can I do for you? Well, it's about Charlie Simmons. I was wondering if you could give us any information. Well, nothing more than I told Gene. Charlie kept his appointment with me Monday morning. We discussed a loan on the ranch, and he left. And you ain't got no idea where he might have gone? Oh, not the slightest. He said he was going home. I see. Well, well, thanks for letting us bother you, Mr. Merton. Oh, it's no bother at all. Sorry, I can't help you. Come on, Pat. Where are we going now, Roy? To the sheriff's office. We'll see if he can tell us anything. Hold it a second, Pat. You got any change on you? Change? Oh, just a minute. Let's see. Yeah, here's a quarter. Let me borrow it, will you? Sure. Wrapped up in white linen As cold as the clay Well, that's funny. What? Did you notice that blind singer standing there when we went up to Mr. Merton's office? No, he wasn't there then. It's a pleasant surprise, Mr. Rogers. Never thought we'd be honored by a visit from you. Well, thanks, Sheriff. Now, this is my sidekick, Pat Brady. Uh, howdy. Yeah, what brings you down, Laredo? We came down to visit Gene and Charlie Simmons. Oh? You, uh, you friends of Charlie's? Well, actually, Dale's a good friend of Gene's. I suppose you know that Charlie's disappeared. Yes. Yes, Roy, I do. You got any idea where he might be? No, not exactly where he might be, but I think I know why he disappeared. Yeah? Did Jean tell you how Charlie was dressed and what he was riding when he come into town last Monday? Yeah. She said he was wearing his white linen suit, his white ten-gallon hat, and he was riding his paint. Yeah, that's right. She even showed us a picture of him in that outfit sitting on his horse. Mm, Charlie was quite a dresser, and he sure was proud of that paint he rode. Got him quite a reputation. Come here. Did you ever see this picture? Well, that's a wanted circular. Charlie Simmons. Wanted for smuggling. You mean you've got Charlie in jail, Sheriff? No, no. This circular is about seven years old. Charlie served his time for that, and when he got out, he married Jean. Well, does Jean know that Charlie did time and stir? No, Pat, she doesn't. Well, I don't follow this at all, Sheriff. Uh, what's it got to do with Charlie's disappearance? Charlie didn't disappear, Roy. He's up to his old tricks. Smuggling. Well, what does he smuggle? Dope, wet backs, anything will bring a price. How long have you known about this, Sheriff? Well, me and the Border Patrol have had our eye on him for several months. But we never could catch him with the goods. He's plenty smart. So you think Charlie went away deliberately? Yeah. I figure he stashed up a lot of money in Mexico, and now that the heat's on, he skipped the country. And left Jean? I'm sorry, but that's the way it looks to me. What makes you think Charlie's at the head of this gang of smugglers, Sheriff? Every time we've had a report on him... It's always the same. A gang of men crossing a border in the dead of night, led by a fella in a white linen suit, wearing a white ten-gallon hat, and riding a paint. You're acting awfully mysterious. Why'd you bring me out here in the back of the ranch? Well, I didn't want to talk in front of Jean. And you must never tell her, Dale. Tell her? What? Well, Charlie's done time in the penitentiary for smuggling. Oh, Roy, I can't believe it. 
poor Jean. Well, I know how you feel, but after all, we didn't hardly know Charlie, and well, I've got no reason to doubt the sheriff. I saw the wanted circular with my own eyes. Who's there? Roy. Oh. Stay where you are, whoever it is. Do as he says, Put dear. hands up. Oh, it's you, Roy. Oh. Sheriff, you gave us quite a scare. Well, what are you doing out here this time of night? Well, just taking a little walk with Dale. Uh, this is the sheriff, Dale. Hello. Well, howdy, ma'am. I wouldn't stay out here if I was you, Roy. We got a tip the smugglers might try it again tonight. We figure they might come this way through the river and over the Simmons Ranch. I got the whole border patrol hid out in those bushes waiting for them. Well, thanks, Sheriff. I'd better get you back in the house, Dale. Look out! Get out! Yeah, there they come. Well, they won't make it this time. We're ready for them. Sheriff, look. Huh? Where? Out there in the middle of the river. Yeah. A man dressed in white riding a paint. Roy, is it Charlie? Yeah. Roy! They got Charlie. He's falling off his horse. Yeah. And we've got him on the run. Come on, Roy. Let's get him. Dale. Dale, what is it? Jean, you shouldn't be out here. Go back, honey. No, why are they shooting? Dale, that man, that man in sight. Is it Charlie? We'll return to Roy Rogers in part two of a story that happened on the streets of Laredo in just a moment. Tomorrow, stop by your nearby friendly Dodge Plymouth dealers and put an elegant new 54 Dodge through its paces. You'll find that here is the car you've been waiting for. Here is the Dodge with more than ever before. Yes, you'll find more new luxury and driving ease and flashing performance than ever before. For instance, Dodge's new fully automatic power flight drive delivers more starting power more smoothly than any automatic transmission ever built. You take traffic in stride, master hills and highways with ease, and there's new Dodge full-time power steering that takes all the work out of driving, leaves all the pleasure in. What's more, the new 54 Dodge offers you a real bonus in power and performance. Dodge's famous Red Ram V8 has been stepped up to 150 horsepower. Your dependable Dodge Plymouth dealer can open a whole new world of motoring enjoyment for you in the great new 54 Dodge. And now back to Roy Rogers in part two of a story that happened on the streets of Laredo. Looks like most of them got away. Yeah, I rode back across the river into Mexico. Well, at least we got Charlie. <laughs> uh, there's a fine end for a man to come to, Roy. Lying face down in the mud of the Rio Grande. Boy, that white suit of his ain't so pretty now. Uh, I'll turn him over. Roy, that ain't Charlie Simmons. Yeah, I see. But he's dressed just like him. White linen suit, white ten-gallon hat. And when he came across the river, he was riding a paint. Sheriff, it begins to look like somebody's been impersonating Charlie Simmons. Yeah. So now the question is, why was he doing it, and where's the real Charlie Simmons? I'll get it. Hello? Roy? Yeah? Yeah, this is the sheriff. Could you come into town and see me right away? Oh, I guess so. Why? What's up? We caught one of the smugglers last night. Mexican fella. I tried to question him, but he wouldn't talk. All he'd say was that he wants to talk to you. Me? Yeah. Seems he knows that you're down in these parts and he wants to see you. I thought if you could come in, you might be able to get some information out of him. I'll be there in a half an hour. Thanks. <laughs> How come you brought Bullet along to town, Roy? For the exercise. He likes to snoop around new towns, don't you, boy? Oh, gather around you. Gather around hey, Roy, there's that blind singer again. Yeah. You got any more loose change, Pat? Huh? Oh, well, let's see. 22 cents. That's fine. Let me have it. Tell one and the 
other before they go further. To stop their wild it. Stop it, boy. Before it's too late. Go back. Well, look out, Bullet. Get out of his way. Can't you see he's blind? Hmm. That's funny. What? Oh, nothing. Come on, the sheriff's office is on down the street. Yeah, there he is, Roy. His name's Miguel. I'll wait out here. Okay, Sheriff. Your name, Miguel? Si. Uh, they tell me you wanted to see me. I'm Roy Rogers. What did you want to see me about? Senor, I am no good. I have done many wicked things in my life. I will pay for them. But it is not right that my Pedro should suffer on my account. Who's Pedro? My little boy. Such a small one. Muy poquito. I do not want he will grow up to be like, like his father. Senor Rogers, you are his great favorite. He will listen to you. I don't think I understand you, McGill. Uh, what do you want me to do? Go to him, senor. Talk to him. Maybe look after him. Senor Rogers, will you go to see him, please? Por favor, senor. McGill, uh, if I do this for you, will you do something for me? Si, si, anything, senor. Do you know a man by the name of Simmons? McGill, well, in that case, I... No, 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 I... I... I will make a bargain with you. Go to my son. See that he will be taken care of. Then come back and I will tell you everything I know. Well, that's kind of unusual, McGill. I don't think the sheriff would approve of it. No, I'm sorry. I can't accept your bargain. Please, senor. But I'll go see your son whether you talk or not. I just happen to like little buckaroos. Where will I find him? Oh, thank you, senor. Here, I have drawn you a map. You take this road and follow for about two miles into the... Thanks for coming along, Dale. I figured with a little boy... Uh, well, you know what they say, a woman's touch. Is... Sure, Roy. I'm glad to help in any way I can. Is it much further? Should be right around this bend in the road. McGill said it was a small shack. Yeah, there it is. Come on. I don't see anybody. Well, maybe he's in the house. Quienista? Que falta? Is your name Pedro? Si. Well, can we come in? No. Well, then, if we can't come in, will you come out here and talk to us? No. Pedro, I have a message from your father. I'm Roy Rogers, and this is Dale Evans. Your father asked me to come and see you. He said that you could tell us where to find a man called Charles Simmons. Go away. What? Go away. It is just like they said. Go away. Go away. <laughs> Quiet, Trigger. Quiet, boy. Well, okay, Pedro, if that's the way you want it. Come on, Dale. Wait. Uh, you... You called yours... Trigger? That's right. Is he... Is he really Trigger? Sure he is, honey. Would you like to come out and see him? See? Si. Well, come on. No. No, I, I must not. Go away. Please go away. Dale, you suppose there's somebody inside with him? No, I don't know. He sure looks scared. Pedro, is somebody in the house that you're afraid of? No, no. Pedro, listen to me. The men your father was working for are not good. They're bad, bad, muy mal. You understand? See? Si. Your father asked me to come here and get you. We want to take care of you. Find a good home where you'll get good food and go to school. Dale, when I break past him, pull him out of the way and duck back. Right. So you see, Pedro, uh, we want to help you. I've got him, Roy. Good. I've got this, hombre. Ah! Stop! Stop! Don't! 
Enough! Enough! Dale! Yes, Roy? Look here what I found. Mr. Merton. Mr. L.B. Merton. Or should I say Mr. Smuggler Merton? No, Roy. You've got it wrong. I'm not the one you want. I'm only the... Look out! Oh, it's too late. He's gone. Roy, Mr. Merton's been shot. Yeah. Senor Rogers, senor. Well, what is it, Pedro? These man you asked me about before, senor Siemens. Yes, Pedro. What about him? He's in a cabin two miles from here. Very sick. Good boy. Can you show us how to get there? Oh, see. Si. Well, come on, then. We haven't got much time. Senor? Yeah? Could I... Uh, would you allow me... Uh, to ride with you on trigger? I'll say I will. Oh, senor, this, this is the most happy day in all of my entire whole life. The cabin is over there, senor. Okay. Woo, woo, trigger. Woo, woo boy. Woo, buttermilk. Oh. You and Pedro stay here, Dale. I'll circle around back and try to take them by surprise. All right, Roy, but please be careful. Be kidding me, Roy? You mean to say that blind singer was the real head of the smuggling ring? That's right, Pat, except that he wasn't really blind. I didn't think he was when I saw him step out of the way and avoid getting close to Bullet the day we went down to the sheriff's office. But what was all that shouting and those shots when you were going up to that cabin? Border Patrol. They had the place covered, too. It seems that after I left the jail that Miguel had a change of heart. He told the sheriff the whole story. Oh, well, what was the whole story, Roy? Did uh, Charlie Simmons have anything to do with the smugglers? No, not really, Pat. Charlie was trying to go straight. But Pete Aldridge, that's the singer, the fellow who pretended to be blind so he could move around the streets of Laredo and spy on people. Well, he met up with Charlie a few months ago by accident. He knew that Charlie had a prison record, so he threatened to expose him unless Charlie let him cross over the border back of his ranch. Well, where did Mr. Merton fit in? He was the fence. He disposed of the stuff the smugglers brought over. Charlie agreed at first in order to protect Gene, but then he changed his mind, so Pete Aldridge kidnapped him and kept him hidden in the cabin so Charlie couldn't tip off the border patrol. Hmm, then I suppose he had one of the smugglers dressed up like Charlie in a white suit and hat and ride a paint so the sheriff would think that Charlie was the head of the gang, huh? That's right. Say, uh, Roy, you know, I just thought of something. Yeah? I gave that fake blind man 47 cents. Uh, you think I'll ever get it back? I doubt it, Pat, but I'll make it good. Don't let that stop you from helping the poor and the disabled. You won't find one fake in a million. Say, Dale, how's Charlie? Well, he's a little weak from lack of food, but the doctor says he's going to be fine. And my papa? He is going to be all right, too, senor? You bet he is, Pedro, and so are you. We'll see to that. And, folks, that's the whole story of what happened to Dale and Pat and me the time we went down the streets of Laredo. As I walk down in the streets of Laredo, as I walk down in Laredo one day, I spied a poor cowboy wrapped up in white linen, wrapped up in white linen, as cold as the clay. I see by your outfit that you are a cowboy. These words he did say as I boldly step by. Come sit down beside me and hear my sad story. I was shot in the breast and I know I must die. Get 
Folks, here are the Mellow Men. There's a better deal for the man at the wheel of the Dodge Chop rated truck. It's got good looks, it's completely new. The chassis, the body, and the engine, too. Dodge is easy to load, find a truck on the road, check the features, and you'll say. There's a better deal for the man at the wheel of the Dodge Chop rated truck. See Dodge today. The words of that little tune sure tells a story, folks. Working on the ranch, my Dodge truck has certainly been a better deal for me. Honest, that Dodge is so downright big and powerful, yet so easy to handle that I just wouldn't want any other truck. So see your friendly Dodge dealer for a demonstration and make it mighty soon. Five minutes behind the wheel will prove Dodge a better deal. Well, that does it for tonight, folks. See you next Thursday, same time. Until then, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. Happy trails with Dodge, the car that gives you more. The new Roy Rogers Radio Show is produced under the supervision of Art Rush and directed by Ralph Rose. Tonight's story was written by Ralph Rose and Stanley Adams. Music arranged and conducted by Frank Worth. Production assistant, Virginia White. Tonight's all-star cast included Pat Brady, The Mellow Men, Virginia Gregg, Peter Votrian, Jay Novello, Frank Nelson, and Bill Johnstone. Join us again next Thursday evening at this same time when the dependable Dodge Plymouth dealer in your neighborhood will again bring you the new Roy Rogers radio show. This is Lou Crosby speaking for the man who sells and services Dodge job-rated trucks and the elegant new 54 Dodge.